vamos, convidar, vamos chamar então o Paul Materson, da Suécia. Ele atua na gestão de resíduos há 20 anos e no movimento Lixo Zero. É respeitado internacionalmente por sua experiência e é o criador do primeiro ecoparque do mundo, usado como modelo para setores público e privado. Paul Materson, você já está aí, vou pedir para você se apresentar e falar um pouquinho do que você faz. Hello and uh, welcome to the World Audio Zero Waste Meeting, uh, which is happening in Brasilia virtually. My name is Paul Martinson. I'm based in Indonesia for the moment, so we are broadcasting this uh, from Indonesia. And uh, this is the second time we have this great meeting in Brasilia, actually. And last time it was live, and it was so great to be in this beautiful country, in this fantastic city. So I will talk about uh, zero waste and consumption and all the R's we have around us today. Um, no intelligent spices would destroy their own environment, but we are slowly doing it. It's not emergency, as so many people say, because the globe will survive. It's more a problem if we're going to do it. So let's take it easy and take the steps we need to prevent everything that is bad for the planet. And that is a lot of things. Of course, one of the things is, of course, plastic. I will not talk so much about plastic. I just want to show you this picture from China, where they have in the plastic area, they have 70,000 shops like this, hole in the wall, selling just plastic junk, which we certainly don't need. So we were told to do something as individual, but we were not told what to do, really. It comes down to each one of us to think and take responsibility for our personal choice for every day. But it is a mistake if you think that only by taking personal responsibility and uh, have a different kind of consumerism will save the planet. No, no. This is a structural problem. A political system that is captured by the commercial interest and an economic system that seeks endless growth, which of course is impossible. We cannot have it like this. So we have to try to minimize our own impacts but we cannot confront these forces merely by taking responsibility because there are issues that politicians and the big companies need to take. They need to take the big steps, but they are avoiding it. So our large consumption of everything, you know, from furniture, cars, electronic, clothes, shows, everything has a backside. It's about the global warming, deforestation, emission of environment, toxins, plastic field seas, and so on. Our only belief over the fragile, fantastic planet we depend on for our survival. We like all the spices. We share it with the butterflies and the frogs and the muskoks and the horses, blackbirds, blue whales and bees. In addition, the people who come after us, our children and our grandchildren, also need food and clean air, clean water. So remember, my grandchildren and your grandchildren, they should not swim in toxic ocean. They should not breed for us. And there is no way because there is always somebody else's backyard. And that could be the next generation's backyard we are using right now. Different R's. Rethink, reduce, reuse, repair, recycle. We all know these, but for the zero waste movement, the most important is to redesign. And that means that we need to redesign a product that doesn't fit into the sustainable loop. To keep it in the loop, we have to redesign it. Otherwise, we cannot put it in the loop. That is the main thing. So redesign all the products that we can take care of. The Zero Waste mission is to com empower communities and to rethink their relationship with the resources. And then we talk about the, the resources we have right now and, of course, of the virgin resources. I advocate for zero waste strategies in the whole world and organize local groups who have the potential to drive a change in their own region. That's why I've been working all over the world for 10 years or more going to different conferences, having workshops, and uh, empower people to start thinking about waste and the zero waste lifestyle. Sustainability is a word we are using a lot. There is a definition, and this is the definition by the Brundtland Commission. Development that meets the needs for the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So it means we should not over-consume, which we are doing. 
The waste hierarchy, you all know it. It is about reusing and reduce. Think before you buy stuff, for example, and when you bought it, you're going to reuse it as much as possible. And we have a throwaway culture, which we have to stop. We have to reuse, which is the old style of taking care of products, which we've been doing for, for thousands of years. We've always been reusing. More than 4 billion people in Asia, in South America, in Africa, like to consume the way we do in the Western world. They like to copy. That is not possible. We cannot do that. This is a, just a picture to show how many globes you need if you're going to consume as you know, Australian or US or whatever you see. And you see Brazil is already over consuming. And that means that the more people we lift out of poverty, the more people goes into consumption patterns because they get money and they go to working class, lower middle class, whatever you call them, but they can start to consuming. And that is, of course, a big problem. So we need to be a little bit more careful with our consumption. We, we cannot tell people that suddenly get money to say, no, no, you cannot consume like I am doing. So we need to have products that are much more sustainable because there will be more people consuming more things all the time. And consumption of things is one thing that will be hard to stop. And the consumption of energy is going steep as Mount Everest for the moment. What, what kind of energy we are using, if it's water, solar, wind, whatever, but the consumption of energy is massive and we also have to do something about that. Consumption by a touch of zero waste. If it is a good product, we must keep it in the loop as long as possible to reuse it. If it doesn't fit in. So all is a balance. So why should we reuse more? Because we energy and raw material savings are replacing many single use products. There is big things happening in the world now. Don't be afraid to try new solutions. Google it and see how people are doing with zero lifestyles and so on. Talk to your friends. Make this fix-it workshop. Make this repair cafes. Try to consume less and try to reuse more. Compost. Buy less. Use your voice. Support small businesses. Fight systematic injustice. The plastic. Eat more plants. Don't waste food. Hold governments and corporations accountable for what they are producing. Repeat outfits. Switch to green energy. Fix what is broken and protect nature. If you start doing all these things, then you will consume less. Benchmark every product we have in the loop to make sure that it is sustainable. Because there is a lot of good labels out here in the world and they're all saying we are for the environment, we are doing this for the best possible way and so on. But there is also a lot of greenwashing going on. So this is the picture, you know, the linear economy on the bottom, we know how it goes there. It goes for the waste, goes to incineration or landfill. The, the other one is the circular economy, the circular loop where we take care of as much as we can. You all know this stuff, but I just want to show it to you. So, on the way to zero waste, we are working towards zero waste, and we are also adopt a commitment to implement zero waste practices, which we have a lot of. To just Google it, go to Zero Waste Europe, go to Zero Waste International's homepage, and look and see what we are doing for the moment. It's a huge impact for the zero waste thinking right now for communities. Good and best practices. Cons communities are now achieving 70, 80, 90% diversion of the waste when they start to separate everything. And when it comes to the zero waste, waste management thinking, you need first of all to separate. Take the organics out of the waste and then separate the rest. Then you have made a big step, of course. And also, if you start thinking a little bit about the uh, consumption patterns, you will see that the zero waste lifestyle or the zero waste thinking is a holistic picture. It includes everything. So what is a zero waste lifestyle? 
First of all, we need to top off. We need to top off the production the way it looks today to get more and better sustainable products. We can recycle or we can die or we can reuse or we can die or whatever it is about. But what we need is awareness about what we are doing. So that means that we have to look into what we are doing, what we are buying. Do I really need these things? Do I need more t-shirts, more shirts, shoes, whatever it is? Start thinking a little bit before you bring all your stuff home. SMM, which is Sustainable Material Management, renew, reducing the negative impacts associated with the life cycle process of material and resources. Daily life example, for example, the paper cup or the plastic cup, you can easily change it. Have your own cup, use porcelain, refuse to take the plastic or paper cup. Very easy. That's a small step, but it is important. It has a huge impact. Consumption. I want you to spend a lot, says Santa Claus, because he wants us to buy a lot of things. And that's the same with the companies. They want us to buy a lot of things. But the only um, option that impacts the bottom line is prevention. We have to make waste prevention, and we need to have prevention for the consumption we are doing. Do your best to resist all these companies that are really advertising and telling us they're popping up the advertising everywhere buy this buy this buy this take it easy you will have all the stuff you need take it easy with the consumption think before buying the flushing toilet is a good example of our lifestyle now we take a poo we flush it away and hope for somebody else to take care of your shit. We don't care very much about it. If we are hoping for the best, but it's wrong. It's not gonna work like that. If you can just press a button or throw something into a hole and it disappear, no, no, there is no way. It's always, as I said, somebody's backyard. And the backyard, that is yours, it's mine, it's ours. It's also what we call the globe. It's with everything around us. That is our planet, our home. So remember, there is no such thing as a free lunch and there is no way. I also like to mention the World Cleanup Day because I'm working with this organization also. Look into the World Cleanup Day, which will be the 18th of September 2021. Uh, to participate in a cleanup is really a good start to start thinking about the waste and see the problem it's caused all over the world. It feels good for people to go out and do a cleanup together because this is a common thing you do together. And people always enjoy group actions and that empower you and you start thinking a little bit more and you can do the brand over to see where is the waste coming from, who's been producing it and so on. There's a lot of information this to read about our on our homepage, the worldcleanupdate.org. And to all people, I say, never give up because there is always an option. Don't take a no. Go on and do what you are thinking for. Because if I'm not doing it and you don't do it, who's going to do it? Remember, everybody counts. We are all shareholders. We have our T-shirt here, which is done a long time ago. We say, make love, not waste. And... I will say thank you to all of you, and uh, you can contact me anytime you want. I'm on the social media stuff, and uh, I also want to say that to all of you out there, we love the job you are doing, and I'm happy to be here, and I say good luck with everything. Start looking for a zero-waste lifestyle and try to adopt a little bit and think before you buy the next stuff. Thank you very much. Muito obrigada, Paul. E agora, deputado, gostaria de ouvir sua, nós gostaríamos de ouvir suas considerações, porque esse assunto, né, entre consumo e consciência do destino daquilo que sobra depois que a gente consome é uma coisa muito importante. O que que o senhor tem a nos dizer? Bom, em relação ao que o povo falou agora há pouco, eu conversei muito esse final de semana, interessante, né? Conversei com a minha esposa sobre isso, a Regina. Nós fizemos uma viagem para Florianópolis para visitar um dos filhos. E eu comentava com ela, eu sempre comento isso, inclusive, com a nossa assessoria. E como também auditor da área de meio ambiente há 28 anos, professor também de geografia, 
Eu comento sempre isso, né, que a população ela tem crescido e vai continuar crescendo, sendo que nós estamos povoando esse planeta, como ele dizia, que é o nosso quintal, e que a quantidade de lixo produzido é uma coisa fora do normal. Eu ficava no hotel, ficamos no hotel durante dois dias, e de manhã eu pegava as coisas de um lanche que a gente fazia à noite, que eu ia comprar na padaria, e ela perguntou, é, realmente você tem razão, olha a quantidade de lixo que só nós dois produzimos e apenas uma refeição. E eu lembro aqui, quando ele fala né, de reduzir tudo, eu lembro quando era garoto, eu até tinha comentado com o pessoal do, das cooperativas de reciclagem, que eu fui lembrar disso, né, quer dizer, sem intenção, eu fui um reciclador. Na nossa época, quando eu era garoto, aqui em Sobradinho, em Brasília, no Distrito Federal, minha mãe, a gente comprava pão, e quando acabava o pão, eu, minha mãe me ensinou, né, eu fazia assim no quintal, para cair o suarelo, dobrava aquele saco de papel, leite era um saquinho, a gente cortava, lavava, colocava do avesso, pendurava no varal, saco de açúcar, e ia dobrando e ia guardando. E tinha uma mulher que morava perto da nossa casa, morava não, tinha um comércio perto da nossa casa, a japonesa, eu lembro até hoje, só lembro que era japonesa o nome, né? A minha mãe falava, vai lá na japonesa hoje e vende. Eu falava, opa. Então eu ia lá às vezes, eu acho que mais ou menos hoje uns cinco reais, né? Mas tinha vezes também que ela falava, não, agora você vai lá e troca por fruta e verdura, ela falava quais, né? Então, de certa forma, o que era aquela época? Já era reciclagem, né? Por quê? Inclusive, acho que muitos talvez aqui que sejam da minha década, de 60, de 70, devem lembrar que nós não tínhamos sacolinhas plásticas. Então, quando a pessoa, às vezes, ia no Carrefour, ela ficava doida para colocar pouca coisa nos saquinhos para ter mais sacos em casa. E hoje, infelizmente, virou isso que a gente vê aí. Né? A gente não consegue é, dar vazão à quantidade de plástico que nós temos. E lembro também disso tudo falando, que ele falou uma coisa muito interessante, que se não tiver política pública voltada para isso, Pode ter certeza de uma coisa, eu sou muito prático, muito direto naquilo que falo, isso não tem solução. Não tem solução. Se não tiver a educação ambiental nas escolas, eu vou falar para vocês, esses, nós que estamos aqui hoje, que estamos participando, que estamos aqui ouvindo, nós vamos ser muito mais difíceis de envergar do que as crianças. Porque não é fácil, toda uma vida, você produzindo, jogando dentro de um saco, amarrando, e botando lá de fora, sem saber para onde vai. Até que parece que vai desaparecer, mas não vai. Vai para o quintal do próximo. Então, nós somos mais difíceis de nos educarmos. Não é impossível. Mas eu penso que é a partir da educação ambiental nas escolas. O meu filho mais novo, o 08, ele tem 10 anos, o Bruno. E eu indo com a minha esposa, de carro, acho que eu estava comendo a maçã. E aquele talinho da maçã, eu estava conversando e, puf, e joguei. E ele me chamou a atenção. Ele falou, ah, pai, você jogou talinho da, ma da maçã. Aí eu falei, ah, mas é orgânico, pai. Ele falou, papai, se todo mundo jogar um talinho da maçã que passar aqui de carro, como é que vai ficar a pista? Eu falei, você tem razão, me desculpa. Né? Pedi desculpa para ele. Outra coisa que eu observo, às vezes está fazendo alguma coisa com a torneira, ele está do lado, o que, que ele faz? Ele vai lá e desliga a torneira. Porque eles têm recebido isso. Então, penso que também, através da política pública, esse projeto que eu falei para vocês hoje, da, das cooperativas é um, é, um, é um projeto de lei voltado para isso, por quê? gente, mais cooperativas vão ter que ser criadas aqui em Brasília porque as 40 cooperativas que existem não vão conseguir depois que a lei for aprovada e sancionada porque o, o serviço de limpeza urbana aqui do Distrito Federal vai ter que se adequar a isso então eu fico contente por isso agora, não é uma coisa fácil nós precisamos sim estamos aí imbuídos, e principalmente através das políticas públicas, como ele falou, para que isso aconteça. Porque é, isso que ele acabou de falar, você escuta, talvez quem, quem milita aqui, escuta várias vezes. Mas a grande população, os meus filhos, os mais velhos, vamos dizer assim, não estão escutando. Agora estão escutando sim, sabe o quê? Consuma, compre, compre. Esse sapato não, outro. Um de azul, compra um, um outro bege. Compre, compre, compre e consume. Ou seja, a catequese, a palavra para consumir, gente, é muito maior nas mídias, na televisão. Então nós temos que começar e não parar. Porque realmente, essa goiaba que eu costumo falar, que nós estamos vivendo nela, né, que é o planeta Terra, os bichinhos somos nós e nós estamos produzindo lixo. E vai chegar um ponto, como já está chegando em vários lugares, que fica insustentável a qualidade de vida. Como a questão da pandemia agora, por exemplo, né, que nós temos aí. E não sei se o prefeito está aqui ainda. 
É, eu gostaria de falar com o prefeito, aqui em Brasília, só, e já termino, aqui em Brasília, nós, desde o início, eu estou batendo na tecla de colocar os garis para serem vacinados com prioridade. Porque o gari, gente, ele está passando na nossa porta, ele não sabe que você tem Covid, ele está pegando o seu lixo. Os catadores também. Eu estou batendo, agora saiu dos garis, conseguimos. E eu estou falando, olha, os catadores, eles abrem o lixo. Muito mais contato ainda do que o gari, talvez. Ou seja, uma classe só para que sejam vacinados e imunizados em relação à Covid. Muito obrigado, gente. Obrigada, deputado. Realmente, o senhor tem toda a razão. É como disse o Paul Matheson, né? cada gesto conta. E ninguém está fora. Né? Não tem fora, está todo mundo dentro.